Thank you. I owe that to God and I owe that to a good mom and dad who, at a very early age, just planted that seed and, and just gave me the foundation. And, and honestly, we're just an example of, of Jesus in so many ways, uh, just the way that I saw them live their life and how they treated others. And um, had it not been for them, I, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't have known that there was a God to, to come running back to. So all of you moms and dads out there that, that pray for your kids, don't ever stop. Um, God hears this prayer. And, and, and maybe right now you've got somebody that you're praying for. Maybe you've got a kid that was just like me that just thought he knew everything and had to go find his way. Uh, I'll never forget my family growing up. They always prayed this one verse over me every night whenever I'd go to bed. And it was Jeremiah 29 11. It says, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper and not to harm you. And plans for hope in the future. And, to be honest with you, until just this past year or so, I never really truly understood that verse until now. Um, just how much it means to have a, a family or a mom or a dad just speaking that life over you and praying for you every day. Um, I made a lot of bad decisions. I didn't grow up um, dreaming about being a worship leader or playing music in church. I, I thought if I could get a basketball scholarship, I could move out of this little small town I lived in and maybe do something different. And, Somewhere along the way, 10th, 11th grade, I got mixed up in drugs and alcohol and uh, completely lost sight track of, of everything that my, my family had taught me. And my senior year of high school, I lost a Division I scholarship to play basketball and dropped out of school and got my GD. And I just remember being 17 years old and thinking, man, this, is, this can't be my fault. Like, it's gotta be somebody else's. At that age, you're not mature enough to accept any kind of blame, I don't think. And for years of my life, I tried to put everything that I ever messed up on somebody else. And, and that was where my problem started. Uh, I couldn't look at myself in the mirror and realize it was my own fault. But uh, I lived some pretty dark years for a number, a number of years. I just remember whenever I started playing music in college, I ended up going to school a year later and trying out for a basketball team at a junior college. And I made the team and got a scholarship moved three, four hours away from home and I found all this new freedom and I found myself right back in the same situation that I was, that I was in in high school, just trying to outdo somebody or trying to impress some girl every night. And I was one of those guys that felt like the party didn't start until, until I showed up and, and it didn't stop until I was ready to go home. And so I, I've always lived 110% and I feel like now that I've given my life to the Lord, if I live the rest of my life 110% for him. It's never gonna be enough for what he did for me. For the longest time I thought growing up in church, you had to have it all together. You had to be perfect to be in this little club, you know, and I, I never really understood. I, I thought God was this, just, you know, he just kind of sat on his throne all day, just looking at me, shaking his head like, and it didn't really click with me until I had kids of my own, just how much, just how much he loves us, you know? Um, and no matter what we do, there's nothing we can do to deserve what he's done for us. No matter what we do, there's nothing that we could ever do to lose it once we've got it. And it, it took me a long time to understand that there's so much freedom in just being imperfect. There's so much freedom in knowing that you don't have to have your stuff together, that you don't have to, to, to try to to try to prove yourself to God, like God knew who, who, who he was making when he made you. And he knew you couldn't be perfect, so he sent his son Jesus to die on that cross. And if this meant for me or for any one of you guys out there, you would have went and bled. And I think about that, like this next song is, is just this picture of God's grace. And the whole idea behind it was, and there's a table that stretches as far as you can see, and your name is sitting there with the chair on it. It's easy, you just pull that chair out and you come up and you have fellowship with God. You can bring all your troubles and all your worries to Him and take that mess and turn it into a message. This song is, uh, this song's called To the Table.